Hello there, everybody. Mr. Peterson coming to you here from the Peterson Kitchen, and uh, we're going to talk today and introduce you to an idea that there are like five, if you were to look at all the chemical reactions that are possible out there, there would be gazillions of them, but many of them would fall into one of five categories, five types, I like to call them five flavors of chemical reactions, and that's what our topic is for this week. So I'm gonna introduce those to you here, and then at the end I'm gonna show you an assignment that you're gonna have called the Chemical Reaction Playlist that I've come up with you. Uh, should be fun, I think, for you to do. Um, so let's get started here. The five types we're gonna talk about are these five. There's a synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions, Combustion reactions, single and double replacement reactions, they are sometimes lumped together and just called replacement reactions, okay? So in a synthesis reaction, we are making something new. The word synthesis means to create or to, 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 to join together. We sometimes ask what you do, like when you read a book in English class or something, for you to synthesize a response, to read something and then create something out of what you've, what you've seen there or read there. So a synthesis reaction, the dead giveaway that you are looking at a synthesis reaction, the thing that should be like, Whoa! Okay, this is a synthesis reaction, is that there's always only one product in a synthesis reaction. If there's only one thing on the right side of the arrow, it's a synthesis, guaranteed. There'll be a few things on the left that could join together to make one new product, okay? So some example reactions here, for example, the car cancer reaction. When we make rust, iron combines with oxygen to make iron three oxide. Uh, if you take carbon monoxide, you can add oxygen to it and make carbon dioxide. Notice that on both of these reactions, there's only one product. The next kind of reaction is called a decomposition reaction, and it's like a synthesis, but in reverse. A decomposition, like we think about decomposing, it's like falling apart, breaking down, rotting, right? So we have one thing that falls apart into several, two, three, four different things. A decomposition is given away by the fact that there's always only a single reactant in a decomposition reaction, okay? So some example reactions for this would be hydrogen peroxide, that stuff in the brown bottle in your medicine cabinet your mom chases you around with whenever you get a boo-boo, that is something that decomposes all on its own. If your bottle of hydrogen peroxide in your cupboard is more than a year or two old, it's just water at this point, because look, the hydrogen peroxide decomposes into water and oxygen. Actually, that's what the bubbles are when it hits the like an open cut. It reacts with the blood in the cut and it foams. That, uh, that foaming, it actually is this reaction just sped up greatly. And so the oxygen is the bubbles that you see there, all right? Another one, this is a reaction. I wish I could hide this little bar on the bottom here. This is ammonium nitrate. Uh, decomposes into dinitrogen monoxide and water. This is a very famous and very sort of notorious reaction. It is used um, as a fertilizer bomb. It's used for all kinds of different terrorist bombs all over the place. The most um, important one in American history anyway is the Oklahoma City bombing, which was in the spring of 1994. Uh, in Oklahoma, or five, I think four, in Oklahoma City, where um, someone loaded the back of a truck full of ammonium nitrate fertilizer and diesel fuel and, and killed a lot of innocent people. Um, the combustion reactions, what everybody's favorite is like, I will take chemistry for the combustion reactions, right? So combustion is a process of burning something, okay? Now this is the one that can be a little, there's some weirdnesses with combustion reactions, right? The thing that is always a guarantee in a combustion reaction, guaranteed, is that you're gonna have O2 as one of the reactants. Has to be, okay? That's combustion. Uh, the other thing that's gonna be here is what we would normally call your fuel, right? So that's like wood, or maybe like that is like, a, like hydrogen gas or methane gas, whatever the fuel is that you're burning right there is what that is gonna be, okay? Now, Generally speaking, fuels that we burn here on Earth, like all the fossil fuels that we burn for all of our energy needs, contain carbon, and therefore we make carbon dioxide and water as products, usually, 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 because usually we're burning a carbon fuel. But you can, there are some things that will burn that don't contain, uh, that don't contain carbon, in which case you may not have carbon dioxide as a product. You might only have water, or you might also have some different other weird uh, products. But those would be kind of odd combustion reactions. Most combustion reactions, have carbon dioxide and water as products. And all combustion reactions have got oxygen, O2, as a reactant. Here's some example reactions right here. This is the combustion of methane, like in a Bunsen burner or maybe in your furnace at home. Methane and oxygen make water and carbon dioxide. It's also the one we looked at when we did methane bubbles uh, here a week or so ago. Here's an example of one that does not have carbon dioxide and water as its product. I really wish that bar would go, hey, look at that. If we burn pure hydrogen, this is like the demonstration I did the first day of school with the balloons. When you burn pure hydrogen, there is no carbon in hydrogen. 
to make carbon dioxide, and so we only make water. The other thing I'd like to point out about this reaction is that it is, in addition to being a combustion, look at it closely, it's also a synthesis reaction. So we sometimes have reactions that can fall into more than one category. Generally, it's these two, combustion and synthesis. There are many, maybe not many, there are some synthesis reactions that are also combustion reactions, like the car cancer reaction, if you back up a little bit, the iron and oxygen makes rust. All right. A single replacement reaction is a reaction in which one element replaces another element in a compound. So if we had this compound BX here, and uh, we have an element A, say, A is going to come in here and bump B out of the compound and make the new compound AX and leave B sitting by itself. This is a lot like cutting in in a dance, right? This is the classic cutting in. This is a perfect example of a single replacement reaction. This is from Back to the Future, the original one, uh, and it is where... Uh, the uh, um, George McFly is at the dance with, with uh, what's the mom's name? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Uh, in any case, I got the, we should, we should just watch it. If you watch one minute video right here, that's a classic, that's a classic single replacement reaction. And he tries to, this other guy cuts in and then like George comes back and like, and, and, and pushes her out. Is it Lorraine? Lorraine. Lorraine. Yeah. Lorraine. Uh, and so, so George is dancing with Lorraine and this other guy comes in and cuts in and then like Marty McFly starts disappearing because like in his picture and he's sitting there because his mom and dad are about to not hook up. But then, but then George comes back and pushes the guy out and grabs Lorraine and dances and then his whole family pops back up in the picture. It's great. In any case, I found the video here and you should watch it if you're inclined. But uh, in any case, this is a single replacement reaction. So here we have this compound silver nitrate and copper is going to come and cut in and make copper two nitrate over here and leave silver by itself. Uh, but the, uh, I'm not sure, I wonder if that's in the way right there. The, uh, this copper two nitrate is going to be um, the new compound that is formed and silver is left by itself. Now, not just any single replacement can happen. Not just anybody can cut in on somebody and make a new compound. You have to be a more active metal and can replace a less active metal. So, for example, if we tried to run this same reaction backwards, right, if we said, Let's try and see if silver can cut in on copper two nitrate. You get no reaction, and that's just exactly like we in the movie here with 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 George McFly and Lorraine, and they try to cut in, but he can't cut in on George McFly. I mean, he's George McFly. He just beat up Biff Tannen, and he's feeling it, and so you can't cut in on dancing with George McFly. So in any case, uh, the next one, the last one, is a double replacement reaction. And a double replacement reaction. Uh, we have two compounds and they sort of flip dancing partners. Think of it kind of like a square dance or something like that where everybody's dancing around and like you're just switching partners. Uh, and so we have the compound AX and the compound BY and they just switch who they're dancing with. It is not like, uh, there's some rules here. A has to go with Y and B has to go with X. These are ionic compounds and we still have to end up with a positive ion and a negative ion together. So for example, you would never have AB or XY they just wouldn't form compounds. But A will go with Y and B will go with X. So here's an example of that kind of reaction. So we got sodium hydroxide and copper two chloride makes sodium chloride and copper two hydroxide. So you see sodium is dancing with hydroxide here. Copper is dancing with chloride. Now sodium is gonna go with chloride, sodium chloride, and copper is gonna go with hydroxide, copper two hydroxide. That's a double replacement. Both compounds kind of just switch who they're, who they're dancing with. Okay, so now for your assignment, uh, here's the instructions uh, for your assignment. You should just quickly read these over. But essentially what you're going to do is I have put in 10 music videos here, or these, these 10 songs um, in these next 10 slides. And what I want you to do is go through and watch each of the videos, at least enough of the videos, in order for you to figure out which of the uh, uh, kinds of reactions this song is about. And then at the end, there's a couple of slides here where I want you to think of songs that make you feel like or think like one of these chemical reactions. Um, and I want you to and find the music video on YouTube or someplace and insert it there. Uh, and I'm really curious to see what you guys have got. I've actually collected these over years and years with students, and I've got like a library of songs that are applied to certain chemical reactions, and I'm curious to see what you have to say.